Sus Susanna Fisher, who's a researcher in the climate change group at IIED. Um, Susanna is going to talk us a, a bit about national action on low carbon development in um, low car in, lo in, in, in least developed countries. IID is very much a partner of CDK and in our work with the least development group of countries in the international negotiations and a host of work. Um, Susanna's colleague um, um, Simon Simon, I can't remember Anderson. Anderson. Simon Anderson, I beg his pardon. Simon Anderson wrote a very useful early piece for CDKN on the climate change poverty uh, framing, uh, which I think has been very influential, and ID has certainly been the front end of this. Susanna comes from a background at the Grantham Research Institute at the LSE, um, and Susanna, I'd like to pass the Great. microphone I to you. I think I've got my yes, own. <laughs> Great, thank you. Um, so what I wanted to do in my five minutes um, was give you a flavour of some research that we've been doing on how low carbon resilient development has been emerging in the least developed countries. Um, it's a part of a programme work, of work we're doing that's funded by DFID, and we're looking particularly at the drivers behind LDCs taking certain actions, and particularly the political economy of that, so going beyond a kind of technical analysis to think about how and why particular institutions or financing mechanisms have emerged and how the agendas of low carbon development and resilience are kind of interacting at a national level within development planning. Um, so um, what I want to do is just briefly touch on three things. The first is the context in which the LDCs are working on low carbon resilient development and their position within negotiations. The second is just on how national action is emerging in different LDCs uh, and the role of development planning. And thirdly, just to touch on this issue of how low carbon development and resilience might come together and some of the challenges and opportunities that that presents within the LDCs. So as I'm sure many of you know already, the least developed countries group represents the 49 poorest and most vulnerable countries in the world. So whilst they're about 12% of the population, uh, they are less than 2% of global GDP and, interestingly, less than 5% of global greenhouse gas emissions. So obviously any discussion of low carbon development um, has to keep in mind their, their level of contribution and also their extreme vulnerability. But despite this, within the negotiations in the international arena, the LDCs have been moving forward on a number of different areas. And all of the LDCs have submitted their national adaptation programs of action. Uh, many of them have started planning on their NAPs, uh, and some have even submitted their NAMAs, their nationally appropriate mitigation actions, although this is not mandatory for them. And as our colleague from Bangladesh touched on, this has also become a bit of a moral and a negotiating issue about if LDCs are moving forward and taking a lead, can this help encourage other countries to move forward as well? But I think importantly for, the, for uh, what's happening at the LDCs, it's not just about uh, global negotiations and kind of global commitments, but what we're seeing now is an emergence of national plans um, that are becoming part of national development frameworks uh, that are emerging in different ways in different countries. So from our analysis um, of what's happened since the early work on this in Bangladesh uh, is that nine LDCs have released national plans or strategies that seek to bring together both a low carbon element and a resilience element within one framework at the national level. And I think we really see these countries as early adopters of these agendas. And in some way, they're underplaying, they're, they're working on a kind of national or natural experiments of how different approaches might work in practice and can give very important insights both for the LDCs and more widely on, on how the synergies can be found and what challenges there are to this agenda working in practice. So... Um, Obviously, there are many different ways to address these issues um, within national planning, and I just want to touch on some of the areas that the LDCs have been focusing on. So a lot of the low-carbon agenda has obviously emerged around renewable energy programs, energy efficiency, uh, low-carbon within agriculture and forestry, issues around crops and livestock. And countries have addressed those in different ways. So, for example, within Ethiopia, where they've been looking at the climate resilient green economy strategy, they've identified four quick wins for implementation. And those are around looking for financing to explore hydropower, uh, looking at cooking technologies and more uh, advanced cook stoves, uh, reducing emissions from livestock, and also looking at deforestation and forest degradation. Other countries, such as Rwanda, have developed uh, financing mechanisms 
that seek to address both low carbon development and resilience uh, within a broader framework. So Rwanda has a financing mechanism called Funerua uh, that has a number of different uh, funding windows which will offer opportunities for line ministries and other actors um, to submit proposals on a demand-led basis uh, to address different aspects of their national strategy. Uh, other countries such as Nepal have developed overarching institutional frameworks and committees which can help drive the agenda at the national level. So Nepal has a climate change council, uh, it also has a multi-stakeholder uh, climate change committee and is now developing within the Ministry of Environment um, a, a committee to drive their national climate change program, which is the number of different uh, development partners supported initiatives that are addressing climate change at the national level. So I think what we can see here is that countries are addressing both time-bound priorities in terms of quick wins and different prioritizations in their strategies. They're developing financing mechanisms which can look at different aspects of the agenda and they're also developing an institutional architecture that seeks to bring agendas together. And the, the third point I want to make is that whilst um, the LDCs are moving forward, there's lots of great progress at the, at the national level, we need to keep in mind that the synergies are not yet that clear between how it's going to emerge between low carbon and resilience and development. And it's important that whilst we really take these opportunities, uh, we also constantly monitor for how that works and keep in mind any potential trade-offs uh, that might emerge between the agendas. So. I think that's about uh, developing monitoring and evaluation around these issues um, and also looking at the scale at which synergies might be found. So for example, it may, may be most effective to find synergies between low carbon and resilience within one particular policy or initiative. Other countries have found it more useful to state an overarching policy objective within which different uh, policies feed in. And other countries are looking at a financing mechanism. So. Um, so there are different ways to find synergies and, and bring these agendas together. And I think uh, as we go forward, we need to keep in mind which of these scales of policy making is going to be most effective and face minimal barriers because as uh, colleagues have highlighted, you know, there has already been some work on the challenges of more cross-sectoral work and the barriers of working across more traditional institutional um, positions within government. So. Um, that's mainly wh what I wanted to say. Just to reiterate, uh, I wanted to say that the structure and dimensions of low carbon resilient strategies can influence success, thinking about time bound priorities, financial mechanisms, and institutional architecture. That the synergies between low carbon and resilient development can be found at different levels of policy making, and governments need to choose the most appropriate. And that we also need to carefully keep in mind the costs and benefits of bringing together the policy agendas in different sectors to determine when this <coughs> approach is most useful and most transformative uh, for work in the LDCs. Good, Susanna, thank you very much. That's useful. Very useful.